Ladies and gentlemen, Open Banking Pioneers, hola. Thank you to Open Banking Week for very generously inviting us to talk with you and spend some time with you today and to share our stories. Open Banking Excellence, OBE as we affectionately call it, um, is a global community of fintechs, banks, policymakers, regulators, service providers, and big techs. And we believe that when you get great people together, amazing things happen. And what Ravi and I are going to do during our time together today is talk to you more around what we're doing in Brazil and how we can share lessons learned with you. Now, Ravi is our strategic partnership director and he is spearheading the launch in, in Brazil with many of our partners. But you will be hearing more from him later during our time together. Okay, so OBE launches in Brazil on the 11th of August at 2 p.m. with Accenture and MasterCard and FData and more of our partners that we will be sharing with you. Now, let's have a look at a bit of a deep dive into who we are and what we do. We are the global center of community and we believe in driving knowledge um, and sharing that knowledge to drive change within, the open, within open finance. We believe in enabling our community to connect, collaborate, an absolutely key word for us, and to innovate. And we're going to be talking more around inspiring innovation with our hackathon. Um, and importantly, this all maximizes the impact and allows uh, growth within our sector. Now, we create, or we're told um, we create, exceptional platforms, and it's all around the quality of the content, and that promotes red hot um, new thinking, partnerships, and, and different ways of working with financial services. So OBE is this place where everybody gathers around the campfire to share their stories and to learn and, and to collaborate. And it really does catalyze the growth and adoption. It's what we've seen in Europe and it's what we want to share with you today. And we believe in the strength and the power of a community. And I think we've all felt and seen that during COVID. And it's emphasized more than ever our place within the ecosystem. And what OBE does is a huge amount behind the scenes that we don't put on LinkedIn and we don't put on social media, but we are working very hard and I'm very, very proud of the team of how they have kept the community connected. Um, so a little bit of a, a shout out and a big thank you to, to them all. So let's have a look at um, Brazil. Now, as everybody knows on our advisory board, I've made a commitment to learn Portuguese. Um, it was, if nothing else, an icebreaker uh, when we had our first advisory board meeting. I would love to come back to Open Banking Week next year and do a couple of slides and be very fluent in Portuguese. So that's my, my very public commitment. But just to start with, uh, we believe we have a lot to share and to learn, and we're all on this journey together. Now, this isn't the Helen Show. Many of you may have heard me say that a bit many times before. So I would like to pass the mic over to Ravi. And Ravi will now talk to you more around open finance and really what it's good for. Ravi, over to you, please. Thank you, Helen. And Ola was not a bad start for Portuguese. You know? So Ola, everyone. Uh, now, I think what, 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 what is uh, uh, good for our, all of us in open finance, uh, we all know that, you know, we have all heard that data is the new oil. Uh, information is very precious. But then, you know, unless the value of information or the data is not unlocked, you know, it, it will always remain as best kept secret. And that is what open finance, open banking is attempting to do, which is to kind of, you know, uh, share the consumer uh, data, not just the personal data, but the transaction data, of course, with, with the consent of, of the consumer. And once this particular data uh, is out there and open and grabs, you know, it will drive competition, it will drive ideas, and you know, from ideas, it will foster innovation. So you will see you know, a lot of you know, ideas converted into use cases, into a minimum viable product and something which, which it, uh, uh, you know, potentially creates new startups and potential you know, unicorns. So immense possibilities there, but it is, End of the day, it is all about a customer. You know, it is it is about personalization. It is about hyper personalization, and that means that you know how much of the customer do I know, and that cannot be on a broad brush basis. But we need to really you know slice and dice the consumer behavior 
to the micro uh, point, you know, which is uh, how uh, uh, the consumer shops, how the consumer buys the insurance, and and uh, all of these, uh, the open banking data will will make it possible in terms of understanding the customer. And if you understand the customer and the behavior, then the products which are hyper personalized uh, can be created with customer right in the center. But it is not a, only about consumer and customers. It is also about a bigger you know, objective, societal objective, which is about inclusion, which is about sustainability. If you look at Brazil, you know, which is over 200 million population, close to one third of them are unbanked. And, and, and you know, most of this unbanked population lives in you know, remote poor areas, you know, poorly housed areas. Uh, even bigger population than this one third would be underserved. So even if they have bank account, but you know, the services that are offered to them are uh, you know not very uh, attractive to them, so therefore they would not you know, buy it, and you're you're missing out on the opportunities there. So essentially, you know, this data will again allow you know different ideas, different ways of delivering services, and these services are not just financial services, but it is also about any services that will touch the consumer, which could be you know in terms of energy, utility, health, retail. So the whole world is out uh, out in open uh, in terms of addressing the inclusion aspects of, of the uh, citizens. The other one is you know, we all talk about, you know, we all have heard about climate change and all, and we all want to do something about it, whether it is in the individual capacity or whether it's as a business or as a community or government. So, uh, you know, uh, we see new behaviors like responsible purchases, which is backtracked to the carbon footprint, you know, so that kind of behavior, which is very positive, which is coming up and what is really enabling them is, is the API economy. And I think you know this is another area where open banking will have massive opportunity to contribute. It's an exciting space, isn't it, Helen? So I think uh, you know uh, we can't have a better timing for this. What do you? Uh, thank you. A beautiful scene setting, some solid uh, positioning there, and. Um, Open banking excellence is, is about inspiring. So if anybody does want to be inspired and to just have a bit of a deep dive, all of those use cases, and it is all about the use case, the use case, the use case, the use case, all of those use cases have been topics um, for our campfire. So you can nip over to our website and, and have a look at those. Okay, so we've got a, a timeline um, here and I am going to just touch on this. Uh, this presentation will be available on our website and we'll be sharing it on, on social as well. So our, our journey in the UK has got many parallels with the Brazilian market and we're going to be touching on, on some of those. But where did we start? Well, we started with PSD2 that came out of the last crash we had. And that really was around um, opening up the market uh, to competition. Uh, to stimulate that market growth and to drive uh, fintech. And I would um, be as bold to say that I believe that open banking actually fuels fintech growth, uh, particularly when we have a delve into some of the, the use cases I'm going to touch on in a minute. So we started, we were born out of a piece of European regulation. And then what actually happened, and it's absolutely key for me, is that we had a government order and that government order mandated that there would be um, a, 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 a regulatory framework. And that was set up by um, OBIE. And what OBIE have done is really created the infrastructure to, that has enabled adoption. And they've created the standards and the regulatory framework. And that infrastructure, I believe, has been absolutely key um, and, and, and has enabled us to, to grow at the pace that we have grown in the UK and has facilitated uh, the adoption. Okay, so we've had the PSD2, then, then the CMA no, um, order. We've also had, uh, you can see there, the Finkelton report. There's been a couple of, of, of reports by Finkelton. And one of them actually says that the UK created the, the blueprint for open banking. And it did, and, and that's one of the reasons that we've been asked to share our stories and, and launch in Brazil, because there are a lot of lessons learned because we, we may not have been the first and you know, obviously there was screen scraping in other parts of the world, but we certainly created the blueprint in, in the UK. So let's actually have a look at some other key, key dates in our, in our timeline. I would say that another key date would be um, uh, when we uh, 
we, we got uh, the CMA9 together, and the CMA9 are uh, nine of, of the great banks in the, in the UK and the building society. And what we will be doing is they were mandated to adopt the APIs. And what we will be doing is asking them to come to our campfires and share their stories. Now, we've been asked particularly to bring the CMA9, and this is a big topic that you want to hear more about. So we heard you, and that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, so if we, if we move on to um, where I believe it gets really exciting and also really relevant for Brazil. Okay, so 2009, this is when we are beginning to motor. So we've got our framework, the CMA9, have adopted all the APIs, and it's all about the use case. So just have a look at that market adoption. And also have a look at the type of people that are taking open banking to market. And this is where I see the parallels with the Brazilian market, with the TTPs um, and the account service providers. And you know what? This is a, um, a sector that is full of jargon. And uh, what we have on our website is a glossary of terms. And I was once told this was the most bookmarked uh, page um, in the industry. So do nip over and uh, it'll help you through um, all the acronyms. Okay, so, but, but what is driving, uh, you know, 137 regulated providers? Um, what, what is driving that? It's, it's the use cases. So let's actually have a look at some of those use cases. And this is what I find fascinating. So they are around um, the, the apps um, that, that um, enable you to, um, to pay inside an app, okay? Or the personal finance management, uh, buying crypto, buying stocks, and of course, accounting platforms count for a huge proportion of our market growth. It's a huge segment. Um, and obviously in the UK, we've got our government, um, HM Treasury, uh, we're soon to be collecting our taxes by open banking. And if that isn't gold-plated endorsement, I really don't know uh, what is. Now, the use cases have driven uh, our rapid adoption and eventually OBE will become mainstream. At, the, at this moment in time, it's sort of early majority and we will go through that trajectory and we will be mainstream. And it's payments that are driving that. And I'm gonna come back to payments um, in a moment. So um, at Open Banking Excellence, we believe that payments is, is ubiquitous. And what do I mean by that? I mean that everybody should be uh, adopting and using open banking payments. And that is what fuels the fintech growth. So at the top of this talk with you, I actually said that open banking payments um, drives the growth. It's actually the use cases, those apps that, are, um, that have payments embedded into them, uh, it's, it's whether you're buying stocks, shares or crypto or personal finance management. It's, it's payments should be ubiquitous. And if you want to uh, go, go to our LinkedIn page you can, or to our blog, you can find, learn more around some of the use cases in, in payments. Now, if we, if we then move on to, um, to, to some of the APIs, uh, that, and this, this business is, is funded um, uh, by, by a bedrock of, of, of API calls. And we've now got a very stable okay, um, and robust platform of APIs. And that, that has, has, has led to the adoption. And just look at those numbers. And that has been driven by, uh, by market uh, growth and adoption. And we can only do that um, because OBIE have created that framework created that directory and we are all moving forward um, and, and driving forward the, 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 the robust platform of API calls. And if there's one thing I'd like to stress, it would be that. And um, I think a picture tells a thousand words. It really, really does. And just look at that uh, baseline of blue at the bottom. Yeah, the UK uh, is leading the way and it really does uh, reinforce our position in the market. And thank you to Consensus for sharing that data with us. Okay, so let's actually now have a look at some of the numbers. Okay, it's all about the numbers and uh, any conversation of depth and to be red hot relevant, which is what we want to be at Open Banking Excellence, 
um, it's got to be numbers and data driven. Now I'm just going to pick out a couple. So 3 million, that is a whopping 3 million uh, people and businesses use open banking. And that's the apps and all those use cases that I was talking about before, embedded into, um, into apps, into, into, into the payment processes, the accounting software, our government now using it, that is a coup. Um, so that's, that's a whopping number and that is on the rise for when open banking payments will become uh, more mainstream. Okay, so let's have a look at some, some other numbers. Um, I believe another key number is, is the number of um, open banking payments that are made um, and, and just look at the 4 million number compared to 20,000 in 2018. And that's OBIE, uh, other source of data there. But probably one of the biggest numbers and, and what I would like to be a key takeaway for you all here to inspire uh, the market growth that we've seen in the UK is that 71% that 71% of SMEs are expect to, expected even to adopt open banking by 2022. That's the next year. Now, SMEs are the bedrock of any economy and that really does fuel growth. And that number should inspire people to get their FinTech mojo on and to get developing those use cases. Um, and. and Okay, so we've talked about some of the numbers. What I would like to do um, is hand over to Ravi. Um, this isn't the Helen show, it's, it's all around collaboration and I'm going to collaborate with my team and pass the mic back over to Ravi. Ravi, floor's yours. Thank you, Helen, again, and it's, it's me. Um, why why uh, Brazil, you know, for all, all the other great places in the world? I think, you know, first and foremost is uh, you know, the, the the roadmap that Brazil has adopted is, I can say, is very very progressive. Not just within the Latin region, but you know, even from a global perspective, uh, it is progressive as well as aggressive. And I'm saying aggressive because of the timelines that has been set up uh, in, in 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 this coming year. Uh, that is really you know fast forwarding and catching up with with where the rest of the uh, world, like UK and and the, and the other countries, have uh, been leading. Um, so, but what does it really do? I think I already talked about, you know, a massive population of yours uh, of Brazil is uh, unbanked and underserved, both put together, and and they they are living in remote areas, which which are in, in can be considered as poorer sections of the society. So essentially, you know, uh, uh, more and more sort of use cases, which has been already proven. Uh, can be adopted, state way replicated, but also local innovation can make it more relevant to to the to the local challenges and to the local problems. And I think uh, uh, another uniqueness uh, which which has been adopted is it is it is competition, but it is collaboration as well. So the traditional and the new players are coming together, forming an ecosystem of collaboration, and we, we, which which is which is creating opportunities for uh, everyone. And the reflection of that is really, you know, in terms of how much of investments uh, Brazil uh, is, is attracting. And we, we see that, you know, uh, just between uh, 2019 and 2020, uh, 910 million has gone up to 1.7 billion. And obviously it's gonna be much more impressive number uh, for, for 2021. So that is another, you know, uh, positive symptoms I can see uh, for, for Brazil. But I think uh, uh, the, the, the major opportunity uh, on this, on the back of uh, open banking, is is worth 10 billion Brazilian real, and which is which is again uh, to be to be harvested by this ecosystem. Uh, and uh, and uh, th th there are Brazil is unique for uh, other two reasons. So uh, one is uh, it it is in a unique position to not discover through 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 the journey of hurdles. But uh, you know, learn from some of the other countries. So, so all those learnings are there. And if I really have to go down to the granular level, it boils down to uh, you know what sort of you know sandboxes, what sort of API connections, uh, what sort of you know dummy data uh, is, is is required. So all of that is uh, already defined, you know, baked into the standards and policies, and can be readily used. You know, so so there is a lot of huge replicability out here. 
But then also, you know, you can leapfrog uh, and apply these learnings and make it more relevant, which means, you know, you can create, you know, new ideas, new ways of doing things, which, you know, uh, the, the rest of the world learns from you. UK learns some of the, you know, uh, 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 applications of uh, open banking from, from Brazil. So that's why uh, Brazil is an exciting space and is a unique place to implement, uh, start this journey of open banking. Helen, over to you. Thank you. So I talked about some numbers before, the 71% of SMEs that were uh, due to adopt open banking in 2022 in, in the UK. Now, looks, now let's look even closer to home at some of OBE's numbers. Um, we're about to have our third birthday in September, and I do hope we'll be having an in-person campfire to celebrate our third birthday. But we started as 30 odd uh, fintechs in a room and um, open banking pioneers, you will often hear me uh, referring to them. And um, somebody put a mic in my hand and said, let's riff and asked me to help out. I'd just finished a big payments uh, project. And um, I, I riffed it and I think that's still what we're doing now. And, and what I heard in that room um, was something very exciting, a real energy and a real drive. And it's exactly the same energy and drive uh, that I heard many years ago when I built a prepaid card issuer. And that issuer was the first to get licenses from both MasterCard and Visa. When we had our e-money license, we were number five in the country and Google was number six. And it was that pioneering spirit that I heard and, and wanted uh, to capture and, and to take forward. And, and, um, and when I was asked if, if we could meet again, um, of course I said yes. And, and the community grew and it grew. And I'm very privileged to say that we have had some amazing speakers. And when we went online, um, it, something quite incredible happened. We, we went online with our OB heroes and we supported some of the great pioneers some of the industry leaders that were um, innovating and, and supporting uh, the UK with our, our, our pandemic really a huge, um, uh, an amazing effort from everybody in the way we all collaborated. And that's when we started doing a, a lot of work behind the scenes, as you would do with any family. And that's when we started making those connections with purpose behind the scenes. It's when we started developing our, our PR platform. It's when we started generally just sharing data and making th stuff happen, making things happen. And that's what I believe is a very, very exciting part of OBE. We are that arbitrator for that independent, impartial conversation. Um, and, and that makes it very, very special. And it is a, now a gigantic uh, global family. So we're now, um, when, we, when we go out live uh, for our campfires, uh, it's in 40 countries across the world, which I find phenomenal and exceptionally proud of. And we've got a, a massive reach. And it's an absolute privilege. And you know, behind those numbers, uh, there is an amazing OBE team. So again, a huge thank you and a shout out to them all. It's an absolute privilege for us to play our, our part um, at, at a very special, exciting time. So let's talk about Brazil and what you can expect. First and foremost, you can expect not only for me to polish up my Portuguese, uh, but you can expect us to listen to really listen. And that's one of the key things that we do and we always do, and that has helped with the growth trajectory you saw on the previous slide. And when we um, started listening to what people wanted, they wanted local campfires, they wanted us to bring those use cases that would inspire, and they wanted to hear from the, the CMA9. So on the 11th of August at 2 p.m., we will have our first campfire. And then later in the year, we'll have a hackathon, and that's to inspire you all to get your FinTech mojo on and to get innovating. And that is, I believe, the main, most ex it's the most exciting place you can be to build a product and to see it come live. We've been asked to do masterclasses, and those masterclasses will be in pace with your regulatory rollout. So we are aligned, and we have more planned, and we will be releasing that. So please. Do follow us on social. Uh, do keep an eye out in the local FinTech press as well. 
Okay, um, let's just talk to you a little bit about um, our infrastructure. We have an advisory board and my, my role is, is to, to listen, to gather a team, uh, the best team I can in Brazil, um, that will shape that market, will collaborate, will build that exceptional content that allows us to drive forward that fresh thinking, that um, passion for being red hot relevant and to keep our community connected. And as I keep mentioning throughout our, our time together, to collaborate. That's one of the key things um, that will allow that your marketing Brazil to really, really accelerate is that co collaboration. And that will have an amazing effect on your growth. So please, please uh, do join us with our partners, Accenture, FData, MasterCard and others on the 11th of um, August at 2 p.m. Um, can't wait to, to share more around um, the stories that we can uh, share, some war stories and some great success cases as well. So please do connect with us, do collaborate with us, and we look forward to uh, talking to you again. Thank you very much for your time today. So that's goodbye from myself and Ravi. Thank you. Goodbye. See you soon again. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye now. <laughs>